Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial. So we're going to be doing a cleanup in this tutorial and there'll be a link in the description to download the source uh, so you can continue uh, with my future tutorials. Uh, so it's going to be a quite nice easy one. So I'm going to start off by uh, just changing the scene a little bit um, like so. And I'm also just going to change a few things uh, in some of our scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and open our C-sharp project um, so what I'm doing as well inside the scene is we're going to change the character. So we're going to take it away from the Y bot and we're going to actually give it a model. Um, it's going to still be from uh, Mixamo. So we'll go through and pick a nice little model. Um, and I'm just going to move the scene around a little bit. So it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, there's a few slight jumping fixes that I thought of sort of after I finished my latest videos. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put those in as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, what I want to do is get rid of any un unwanted usings. We're going to make variables private that aren't supposed to be public anymore. So we're going to clean it up a little bit. So for example, is walking. Uh, we don't need to see that. But we're actually, yeah, I think, <laughs> well, that's not a good example. We're going to want to keep that one. Uh, is sprinting, we don't want to see. So we're going to hide that in the inspector. Like so. Um, so now we're going to make a few things private, uh, starting with the relative player velocity. We'll make that private. Um, if we need to come back and make these public later on when other scripts try to access it, um, we'll do so. Um, but for now, we're just going to hide everything that I don't think we really need to see. So for example, falling speed, we don't need to see. Speed peak, we don't need to see. Uh, threshold, we do, I believe. Let's quickly have a look how we used it. Okay, yep, we need to see threshold. Um, falling movement speed we need to see, running movement speed we need to see, jumping triggered. Um, we don't really need to see that and we don't need to see falling triggered either. Okay, so that's already tidied it up a little bit. I was going to go to our camera controller. Um, I realized after I done it, we don't actually need to put it in a fixed update. Um, I completely got that wrong. It's only movements with the rigid body we're supposed to put in the fixed update. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this comment. I don't need that anymore. I think uh, I quite like how it sticks to the player. We might add some smoothing a little bit later on. I'm going to get rid of the fixed update and pop that back into the normal update. Clean that up again. Uh, so this script should be nice and clean. We haven't really changed much. Uh, we'll get rid of movement velocity now. Um, and we can also get rid of movement smooth time. Just double check it's not used anywhere, which I don't believe it is. We'll get rid of that as well. All right, so back to our player controller. Uh, so there is a slight little bug that we're going to quickly fix and that's that the falling peak doesn't always uh, get calculated correctly. Um, so basically even after we hit the ground in between this and this uh, the falling speed peak can change. Um, so what we're basically going to do is uh, change some of these. So instead of is falling uh, what we'll do is we'll just have um, and falling triggered. Don't need to call that function again. And we'll also add this and falling speed. So basically, if we're falling down um, and falling has been triggered, I'm going to, instead of falling triggered, I'm going to add some brackets. I'm going to say falling triggered or jumping triggered. So either of those two. Cool. Um, what I'm also going to do is instead of um, having two functions that do the exact same thing, we're going to combine them. So I'm going to throw the current condition into its own bracket. So it's kind of like double bracketed out. And I'm also going to copy this if statement. And we're basically going to, go to say or. So we kind of combine in the two if statements. Just like so. Cool. Nice and clean. Um, I think uh, all that is OK. Um, we'll give a little region for our gizmos. And uh, end region as well. Cool. Um, I'm going to comment these out for now. We can uncomment them when we need them, just to sort of clean up our our um, game a little bit. All right. So the other thing I wanted to do was edit our jumping speeds. So um, in the tutorial, I set it to 10 and 20 we'll go 
hundred and one fifty. Um, might seem a little steep, but what I realize is only because there isn't a max. Okay. Uh, while I'm here, I also wanted to sort out the lighting. Uh, so for now, under environment, uh, environment lighting, source skybox, I'm just going to change that to a gradient for now, uh, just to get rid of the pitch black. Uh, we'll come through and do a tutorial on lighting. Uh, as you guys know, Unity's lighting is pretty powerful. Um, so anyway, let's get back to our jumping. So 100 and 150 seems good enough. Um, so while I'm in the air, you see I can kind of move around a little bit. Uh, more so kind of stop which direction I'm going in. And stuff like that. Cool. All right, so the reason you've got to be careful though, because if I enable running, it still keeps the relative velocity. So you see if I'm uh, already moving, um, it basically gives us a huge boost. Um, so you see here, uh, which we will fix a little bit later on. We'll basically just add a maximum velocity. Uh, just though we can't keep moving, <laughs> can't keep adding force uh, constantly. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to change the character. Okay, so the new model's in. So you can see I've renamed the old one to Jack Old, and here's the new one. So with Mixamo, you may have noticed that it never exports with the materials. Um, you kind of have to extract it yourself. Luckily, it is stored in the FBX, so they've made it fairly easy. So I'm just going to create a new folder and call it Textures like so. And then on our jack, I'm just going to go to materials and extract textures. I'll click on the new folder I just created. Um, I'll let that do its thing. And then once that's once that's done, uh, we'll just uh, do the same on materials. There we go. It's going to come up saying that the normal maps um, need to be done. So just click fix now. That's okay. It's expected. All done. So we'll extract materials now. I'm going to put it into the same folder. And let that do its thing. Okay, so if we have a look at these materials, you can see luckily it's already auto-assigned them to, uh, to what's in our folder. So it's already mapped all of them out, which is quite nice for us. Um, so if I click and drag the new jack in, you can see the new and improved model. Cool. So it's looking a lot better. Um, we just need to move everything from our old jack onto our new jack. So it's actually pretty pretty simple and easy to do. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to copy each component, like so, go over to the new jack, and uh, paste this new. Let's see now we've got our animator on there. Uh, let's go to the old jack. What do we need? We need our rigid body. So we'll uh, copy that component. Go over to jack. Uh, paste as new and rinse and repeat until we're good. Uh, so the capsule collider might need to be changed a little bit because uh, obviously our characters changed. The new model is a little bit taller. Um, so let's change that to 0.95. And then the height to two. Make it a little bit, a little bit less than two, 1.9. Let's say, let's say that's perfect. All right. Okay. So let's continue. So next is our controller script. So we'll copy component and then paste as new. Okay, cool. There is one thing that's going to error. Uh, we currently don't, let me rename that to Jack old actually while I'm here. And this one can just be Jack. Cool. Um, our camera target. So obviously we need to replicate this. So I'm going to control D while I have it selected and I'm going to click and drag it onto the new Jack. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the old one. I'm going to copy component, uh, copy position, sorry. Um, on the old transform, I'm going to go over to the new camera target and I am going to paste position. Okay, so you might need to raise it a teeny bit, just play around with it until you're happy. I'm gonna get rid of the duplicate one. All right, so now with our camera, we just gotta point it to the new target. 
so player controller, we point that to the new player controller. And yeah, okay, I think we're good. Let's make sure our player controller script has our new target. Let's see, it's still referencing the old target. So make sure that's the new one. And uh, everything else should be the same. Make sure you apply the player layer. Change your children. Save. All right, fingers crossed. I'm going to hit play. Let's hope it works. <laughs> okay. Um, what are we doing? Uh, let's make sure that they're using the... Okay. <laughs> Okay, I need to look at that one more time. <laughs> okay, all right. That's going to be the thumbnail. Let's do it. Taking that. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. Whew. Okay, so now we have the thumbnail. <laughs> let's, uh, let's carry on. Let me just uh, save that to my desktop. All right, so continuing. So good news is we now have a fill. Bad news is I had to go and download all the animations again from Mixamo because all the bones were different for the new character. So there'll be two downloads in the description, uh, one for the source code uh, so you can download the project, um, one for the animations themselves if you want to try apply them yourself. So as you can see now, I just have another fill character who is our new black dude. And I have generic animations I just re-imported pretty much the, that re-downloaded pretty much the same animations and set them up exactly the same as I did previously. Uh, the controller is exactly the same. The only difference is the bones and the animations and of course the character himself. So let's ignore the fact that we've now double jointed his um, his elbows. They look like they're going backwards a little. Uh, but I'm quite happy with the result. He looks a lot better. Um, so we're going to be using him as our new uh, test character, which will be quite nice. Nice little bit of change. Okay, so now there's a little issue I want to fix. And that's mainly if we're moving, we move the camera, you see the player follows it for a little bit. So we don't want that. We want the player to only follow that when we're given an input. So when we're moving forward or left, um, otherwise we just want the player to stay still. It looks a bit weird. All right, so the way we're going to do this is uh, a few tutorials ago, we created a function called isMoving. Uh, so if I have a look here inside our player controller, here's our isMoving. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that function. Um, and it's going to be quite simple. So I'll have if input is moving. So basically if we if there's any input to move, um, we're going to change the dead zones from 0.4 to 0.2s. Uh, the reason we need dead zones is obviously for like uh, joysticks and stuff. Um, what we can do later is pop it in a variable and have it so you can change it in the settings. Um, instead of using our relative player velocity, we're now just going to be using our uh, input movement. Uh, so input movement dot x and input movement dot y's. And then we're going to be using this function uh, dot y's. Sorry, did not see those were z's. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to be using this function to basically determine whether the player can rotate. Um, so in our, where we rotate our player, we, we do our little transform to look at trick here. It's based off of player movement. So we go to where we set the values of player movement, which is a little bit further down over here. We can simply just pop that in an if statement with our new function. So go ahead and pop that inside there. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and test it inside unity now. I'll go ahead and hit play. Okay, so if I'm moving and I stop moving, yeah, there you go. See, it's a bit more natural. He only follows uh, the camera when we're actually given an input, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, so yeah, that's uh, working perfectly. So the next thing I want to fix is, you see, we have this... Um, with the quaternion, if we do the exact opposite, you see it kind of snaps like that. Um, so that's to do with um, us lapping the quaternions. Um, so what I'm going to do is firstly, let's go ahead on our fill settings, character rotation smooth. Um, let's just set that to 0.1 for now and just see, make sure that this isn't too slow.
So see, it feels a little bit more natural, um, but it's still a little bit too slow. So we will set it to 0.2. So when we're lapping the quaternions that quick, uh, you know, 180 degrees, it does it quite quick, which is why you get the whole snap. So lowering that has made the movement feel a bit nicer. A little bit slower, but a little bit more natural, which is kind of what we want to go for. Um, cool. All right, so I will. Um, that'll be it for this episode, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.